Hi everyone, it's really great to be here with you guys today. And today we're going to talk about how we built our big data stack almost entirely on top of Kubernetes. So first, let me introduce myself. Hello everyone, I'm Neilson. I'm Chief Data Officer at A3 Data. I hold a PhD in Economic Sociology. I was visiting scholar at Centre de Sociologie des Organisations at Sciences Po in Paris from uh, between 2017 and 2018. I am a college professor for more than 10 years now. I have been teaching all this time. I really love it. I'm really passionate about it. And something very important about myself is that I am completely addicted to Rubik's cubes. So I have lots of them here, lots of different types of cubes. This is great. So that's it. I have a QR code to my LinkedIn page. Uh, if you want to add, if you want to talk about some of the topics that we're going to cover here today, it will be my pleasure. Okay. Great. So let's get started. Uh, I cannot tell you the story about how we migrated our data architecture to Kubernetes without telling you a little bit about A3 data. So what is A3 data? We are a consulting business focused on data and analytics and business strategy. And our main goal is to try to help our customers develop maturity related to data analytics, machine learning, and data governance. So uh, in doing that, we face a, a great challenge that as a consulting business, we have lots of different scenarios. So we have customers from very different industries, uh, very different business models, and also very different technology stacks. We have uh, today uh, customers that work with AWS, with Google Cloud, with Azure, some customers that have their uh, data stack and tech stack uh, on running on premises. And this is very challenging because uh, if we build a solution for a customer that is running on AWS, if we want to build exactly the same solution, exactly the same data lake structure with Google, essentially we have to rebuild the whole thing from scratch because the services are different uh and the, the, this this is simply not possible to do uh, uh what they call lift and shift we have to rebuild everything again and this is very time consuming energy consuming this is something that was not great for us and uh uh we uh, it was very important to us to assure that our data uh, architecture had reliability Standardization because we didn't want to rebuild everything from scratch from scratch every time. Uh, automation, great performance, and for us it was especially important that we had portability, that we had a data architecture that we could uh, run it anywhere, run it uh, on whatever uh, was the customer stack, cloud provider, whatsoever. So our data engineering and data architecture teams got together and they, uh, they, they, they made a great effort on 2021 to migrate our data stack to Kubernetes essentially to achieve these goals that I have mentioned to you right now. So, uh, and they come, they came up with this, uh, diagram. This is the solution. Uh, let me explain it a little bit for you. So we have different, uh, lots of data, lots of different data sources. We work with SAP, with uh, uh, several different uh, relational databases, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgre, MySQL, whatever. Uh, we have, we also consume data from different APIs from Google Analytics. So we have a, a great variety of types, formats, uh, sources that we work with. So if uh, you pay attention to our, uh, to our diagram, you'll see that mainly what we have here is what we call a Lambda architecture. Lambda architecture is uh, defined by two layers that run in parallel. On top, you can see our batch layer and in the middle part, you can see our real time layer, layer or our speed layer. 
Okay, so the first uh, part that we have in our architecture is the ingestion layer. So we have mainly Kafka to do it. We rely on Kafka to, uh, especially to migrate data with Kafka Connect from relational databases to our data lake structure. It's very efficient. Sometimes we, uh, when we don't, when we have to deal with other things uh, other than relational databases, sometimes we develop customized producers for Kafka. Sometimes we developed customized Python processes. Also, those Python processes run on top of Kubernetes, essentially in pods. Okay, so this is our, this is how we uh, ingest data to our data lake structure. So on the top, uh, we have the storage part, and this is the only part that we did not migrate to Kubernetes. Why is that? Because S3, GCS, blob storage, uh, all of those uh, object storage services on cloud, they have already a lot of features that optimize usability and high availability of data that you put there. So for us, it did not make sense to migrate uh, storage or Kubernetes. We know that we have today lots of great tools uh, to store data on Kubernetes, but this uh, did not make sense for us then. So this is the almost part. This is the only part that is not running on Kubernetes. This is uh, service-based, okay? So we have object storage uh service based and this is uh where we build our uh data lake uh storage okay so for processing we mainly use spark probably uh today spark is the most most used big data framework uh today uh worldwide you know it's a great tool it has the capacity to process terabytes of data uh really really fast and uh, because it's a cluster engine, you can scale horizontally. So you can scale very easily with Spark and process huge amounts of data. So we adopted this as our standard and we now run Spark on Kubernetes. I'm going to explain you how in a bit. Uh, next, you have our serving layer. So uh, we don't use data warehouse anymore. We work now with uh, uh, SQL query, distributed SQL queries engine or uh, what we call uh, data lakes engines. So uh, like Trino, like Presto, the Trino is the one that we adopted as our standard. Uh, Trino has the capacity of receiving a, a SQL query running this uh it has capacity of to run this query against the objects the data that that we have on the data lake the objects that we have a data lake and returning results to the user this is really great because we can work with a huge variety of data types data formats and this is transparent for the user you just put there your query your your sql query and you got and you get the data that you need. Uh, at the very end, we have our data viz and data analysis layer. We mainly use those two open source tools, Metabase and Superset, which are great tools, and they are very Kubernetes ready. Uh, it's very simple, very easy to deploy them to Kubernetes. So uh, we mainly use uh, uh, those tools. At the middle part, you can see our speed layer, our real-time layer. So for real-time processing, we mainly use Spark, uh, the structure streaming Spark mod module. Uh, this is really great. It works uh, fine. And we also use a lot of KSQLDB. KSQLDB is a tool that runs uh, on top of, of Kafka. It has an integration with Kafka and you uh, do uh, SQL queries uh, to build your data processing on real time. And because KSQL runs on top of Kafka, it's really fast. It has an extreme low latency uh, for doing uh, the processing. And this is great. Those are the, the two main tools that we use for, for real time processing. For real time serving, we use Apache Pinot, uh, with a modern 
uh, data warehouse solution. It, it has great power of, of uh, scaling, uh, very low latency, and we also use Elasticsearch. It's a very well known tool. Uh, so this is our uh, batch layer and speed layer. For data platform, we use Argo CD. It's a great, great integration tool for Kubernetes. Argo CD has the capacity to watch our Git repositories. We can put their uh, manifest files, Helm charts, lots of different uh, types and formats to deploy to Kubernetes. And uh, whenever we have uh, an, an update, Argo CD can uh, can can uh, be aware of it and migrate automatically the updates or the new stuff to Kubernetes. Okay. For observability, we mainly rely on those very also well also uh, very well known tools, Prometheus and Grafana. For orchestration. We use Apache Airflow, which is also really great, a very used tool nowadays. And for data catalog, we are using Data Hub. This tool was developed in LinkedIn uh, and has a great interface and great features for data catalog. Okay. So this is our architecture. How did we deploy it? Kafka, we mainly uh, used Streamz operators. So Streamz is a, is an open source operator that builds uh, custom resources that allows us to uh, deploy a Kafka broker, a Kafka Connect uh, cluster, Kafka connectors, configure Kafka connectors in a very simple, very easy way. So we mainly rely on Streamz operator for deploying Kafka on Kubernetes. Uh, for Spark, we also have the Spark on Kubernetes operator. So this operator creates the possibility for us to use Spark applications as a new custom resource on Kubernetes. So you have your uh, Python uh, scripts, Python files, and your manifest files to deploy your uh, your Spark application. Spark applications, it runs great. You have nowadays several ways of uh, sending Spark jobs to Kubernetes, but this is the one that we found the most efficient and the simplest, the easiest way of doing that. For Elastic, we also have an operator provided by Elastic Co. That's called Elastic Cloud on Kubernetes. Uh, it's an operator that we can uh, use to deploy Elasticsearch and also Kibana. And if you want, also another products from Elastic. So we mainly use Elastic Cloud and Kubernetes, this operator to deploy Elasticsearch on Kubernetes. For all of the other uh, tools, we mainly use Helm charts. All of them, especially the, 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 the newer uh, tools, they already come with an official Helm chart, such as Airflow, Superset, Trino. Uh, and this is great because they are, uh, when they, when they were developed, they were already thinked on being Kubernetes read, ready from the start, which is great. Uh, we can deploy them very easily on, on Kubernetes with Helm charts. Okay. So this is our architecture. This is the, this is the draw, the final draw. And finally, guys, what have we achieved with all this effort? So we achieved a completely automated deployment. This was great. We already uh, worked with automation very seriously on our data stack using infrastructure as code, using CI CD pipelines, using GitOps. But when we migrated to Kubernetes, this provided for us uh, the whole uh, Kubernetes, the whole uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, the whole automation as a principle that Kubernetes brings. So we got ourselves a more mature uh, architecture uh, uh, regarding automation. Uh, also, reliability. We had a reliable architecture because uh, Kubernetes can uh, recover automatic automatically from fail. This is great. We reached the scalability that we wanted. We reached the portability that we needed. This was very important. Once we had our data stack on top of Kubernetes, 
we could uh, run it on AWS, we could run it on Google, on premises, uh, wherever uh, the customer wants. So this was great because we had just one solution, one standard, one very great tool that we believed uh, and uh, developed, and we could run it uh, anywhere we were portable. This was great. And also, uh, we uh, achieved uh, a great reduce on solution costs. That was great because uh, running our data stack on top of Kubernetes uh, is way cheaper than a service-based architecture. So we got ourselves some cost op optimization there. And finally, we got also a happy team because everybody was so excited about working with Kubernetes, working with data on Kubernetes. And now they got they get to do that, and it's great. Everybody is happy. Okay, so guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much, and I see you next time. Bye bye.